Ghost Rider movie review. Johnny Blaze is a teenage carny, and he and his father jump through fiery hoops on motorcycles to amuse rednecks. Johnny lives a relatively carefree life. He has a sweet girlfriend named Roxanne, and the business is... Actually, we don't exactly know how it is, but anyway, his father has a bit of a problem with smoking, and he evidently is dying from it. So, one night, Peter Fonda, who it turns out is the devil, well, at least he can play it, more on that later, arrives in a rather showy fashion, setting up how much collateral damage the devil folk are going to be causing later on, and, you know, turning off all the lights. I don't know, but yeah, he, he just does. And he offers Johnny to heal the cancer, I believe it is, that his father is suffering from. Johnny sort of agrees and signs the contract. I don't know, it's just like the contract pricks his skin and a drop of blood hits the, you know, and it, I get it, it's that whole thing with, you know, you sign it in blood and that thing, but Frankly, Johnny doesn't look like he comprehends what is going on, and since he is soon after played by Nicolas Cage, that trend continues, and Nicolas Cage is up to the top level of Nicolas Cage weirdness in this film. I have no idea how they let him get away with some of the stuff he does in this film. So yeah, he is, you know, he signs the contract, next morning wakes up, his father seems alive and well, and everything looks fine, but too late, Johnny realizes he's in a Marvel comic adaptation, someone he cares about must die, it's gotta be his motivation, so, you know, no one else around for that to really happen to, but, you know, well, Roxanne, but... Yeah. So his father dies, and he rides away on the bike. I'm not entirely sure what he's thinking of doing, but he rides away on the bike. The devil stops him, Mephistopheles, Peter Fonda, and tells him, you know, nothing is going to happen to you from now on. And, like, he, you know... Mephistopheles will control him from now on, and he will also be keeping him alive, which is evidently one of the Ghost Rider powers, and it is a great ability enabling the filmmakers to completely drain the film of any tension surrounding the titular character. We know he is not ever going to die, and the film worsens this by having us sit through no less than two stunts of just Johnny jumping over things. We know he's gonna make it, we know nothing is going to harm him, so what is the point other than padding, which... The film is... I believe the film is actually less than two hours, but you're gonna feel every single minute of it. Anyway, so, the devil returns and tells him, you know, I don't know exactly why I waited for you to, be, to get quite as old as Nicolas Cage to ask you for this. Seriously, horrible miscasting. Anyway, I want you to go after my equally miscast son, Blackheart. Wes Bentley, I have nothing against this guy, but he is not the devil's son. Okay, he cannot pull that off. He is like the... This current teeny bopper generation's version of the devil's son. Almost, you know, and he has this group of... 
I think they're referred to as like fallen angels or something. They're the, the hidden, and they hide in the elements, which means that, you know, they're like wind, earth, and water, and they all look like pop star rejects. And yeah, so, you know, he sends the Ghost Rider out for, you know, out to attack them, and yeah, that's, I guess that pretty well covers the plot. Well, it should maybe also be mentioned that Roxanne returns, you know, he, he left her behind when, he, after he signed the contract and his father died, and now she excuse me, returns, and is shown to be quite desperate for him and his approval, which is a little odd, and part of how uninspiring a female character role it is. So, yeah. I don't know if Eva Mendes just really needed the paycheck. Yeah. Cage and Mendez have zero on-screen chemistry. It seriously looks like they want to be someplace else when they are together, and the, the like the the affection is just painful. Not quite as painful though as the horrible one-liners and puns that the Ghost Rider seems to have a penchant for. Just dreadful. And the, just the, the dialogue in general is really not very good. A at best, it's just dull and not at all memorable. The effects were pretty good when the film came out. They haven't aged completely well, but the bigger problem is they are evidently the main focus. And this is a huge miscalculation. It's actually difficult to fathom that this movie was done by Mark Steven Johnson, who also made the Daredevil adaptation, a film that, while not, you know, it's arguably somewhat flawed, it's still a pretty decent flick. And action? It has it in spades, and for my money, it's good action. Ben Affleck notwithstanding. This... Where is the action? I, I guess what what is supposed to pass for action is aforementioned collateral damage. Every single time the Ghost Rider moves from one spot to another, he destroys something in his path. A couple of times he very nearly harms innocent people, which I thought was kind of a no-no. I thought he was the good guy. Yeah in spite of him working for the devil and that whole thing. Yeah, anyway, that's really it. He smashes up some signs, you know, he tears up the street with his fire wheels on the bike, and that's kind of it. You know, yeah, he, you know, I wouldn't say he faces opposition, but there are theoretically people in his way, or people, you know. I also wonder why Blackheart's greatest, like, you know, Mephistopheles, you can kind of see this guy's the devil, you know, he, you know, ooh, he'll trick you and make you sign over your soul kind of thing, you know, and Peter Fonda, again, this guy has the acting chops, you know, Wes Bentley, not so much. Uh, well, I guess it's also just the, the gravitas of, of Fonda versus that of Bentley. Again, not hating on the guy, but he's like 20 in this movie, okay? He just got out of high school. He's not the son of the devil. He is not one of the great evils of the entire world, you know? I, I, he's just not. Yeah. <sighs> And he, too, doesn't like lights. Yeah, it's it's actually... It's, it's amusing to see them cut the lights when they arrive places. But yeah, Blackheart apparently enjoys 
meeting in public places and killing everyone there so that he can meet with these, you know, goons, the hidden. I guess that's the big, you know, I guess that's why he's not the devil. My, that was my girlfriend's suggestions. That's why he's not, he's only the devil's son. Because he can't think of anything more, like, sinister than, you know, okay, so it's death, but still, you know, he's not, like, tricking people into doing something horrible or taking souls or he's just making people rot it would appear, you know, with, from, from the effects. But yeah, the battles tend to just be effects show-offs. Yeah, really, and there are, there are far too many effect shots in this movie. It, th there are scenes where they literally just, it barely even makes sense why something is happening. It's just the, you know, like you probably saw in the trailer, Ghost Rider rides up a building. I'm pretty sure that whole sequence was just written because they liked the idea of seeing him ride straight up a building. And sure, it's a cool enough idea, but when it is so obviously just there to show off what the effects crew can do, you know, it is not terribly motivated. It's, yeah. The humor is... Really, I'm, I'm running out of synonyms for the word painful, because that's really what it is. If every single time the movie tries to be funny, it fails impressively. Like, if, if we were giving out medals, it would bring in the gold over and over. It just, it really needed to not try to be funny, or to have someone actually, with a sense of humor, writing the jokes. You know, it's it's really dreadful. One relatively positive aspect of this is Sam Elliott. And you just... The the gravelly voice, the, the cowboy face and just eyes... And I'm not talking about this, any kind of, like, pretty cowboy. We're talking old school proper western cowboy, you know, like the Clint Eastwood kind of cowboy. And he just, it, I don't even think he has to try. And that really, you know, when he is on screen, you care a bit, you know. He really has a, a thankless job of delivering exposition, which is just really dumb. Any way you look at it, I... The film also has a problem. I'm not sure all of the exposition that is actually supposed to be in the film is actually said. I... There were things where suddenly a character thought that he knew something about something or other that I'm really not sure was ever actually said. Like, suddenly Blaze is making these assumptions about his powers and... Yeah, I don't really see any basis of it. The film really isn't very interesting on much of any level. It does have one or two things that, you know... One is a... It, it treats a typical superhero secret identity type cliché in a slightly different manner or somewhat different manner, and, you know, that is at least potentially interesting. And, yeah, Sam Elliott, and the effects, but that is really about it. The, the, you know, the villain plot is not very interesting. I guess I haven't actually mentioned anything about that, but basically, the original backstory, you know, somewhere, I, I think, actually, before the actually pretty coolly done credits, opening credits sequence, you know, it's actually too bad that the film has to follow after that because the, you know, pretty nicely done. In that, you know, segment, the backstory is told of this really important contract that had like a thousand, you know, bad souls in it. And that would make a devilly person really 
powerful. So, and Mephistopheles doesn't have it, now Blackheart is trying to get it so that he can usurp the throne. You know, it's straight out of a soap opera. But yeah, that's essentially it. I'm not sure the film even makes it all that clear, or maybe I was just bored to notice, how it's going to make Blackheart more powerful... And the film certainly doesn't do much to show it, so, yeah, but, yeah, I'd skip this one if I were you. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.